welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and these are 10 commanders that I am shocked how unpopular they are. I did a video like this a few months back, and now I'm coming with 10 more suggestions for commanders that I think are really good, and I can't believe how unpopular they are. It's a combination of these commanders seem like really interesting build arounds, and there's a lot you can do with them, and then also commanders that I just kind of thought would be popular and aren't at all. And I don't really get it. I don't know if there's any particular reason why. So I'm going to start off with Imrith Desert Doom. Three blue blue. Dragon 5-5 five, five flying. Imrith Desert Doom has Ward 4 as long as it's untapped. When Imrith deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Then if you have fewer than three cards in your hand, draw cards equal to the difference. I was pretty impressed with this guy when it first came out in Forgotten Realms. I ended up doing it on my Underwhelming Commander series a few months later because it was really unpopular. Still really Really unpopular only 122 decks on EDH rec that's next to nothing so just to give people a sort of an idea of how the whole decks thing work if you're new to EDH rec that's what I use sort of for all my statistics in the format the most popular commander in the format right now is a track Praetor's voice over 13,000 decks okay so Imrith only 122 attracts a 13,000 kind of a big difference there of course attracts it being the most most popular one in the entire format is a big leap, no doubt. But the rank 100 commander in the entire format right now is Angie Falconrath. Okay, so the 100th most popular commander in the format, and that has 3,670 decks on EDH Rex. So even when we get all the way down to 100, still miles ahead of all of the commanders that I'm talking about on this list. And again, most of these commanders are ones that you might not ever see in a commander game, and I think they're pretty interesting. So Imrith, I think, first of all, I kind of like the whole, it's got Ward 4 as long as it's untapped thing, because it's something you sort of have to build around, right? Of course, if it attacks, it's gonna be tapped, and then your opponents can hit it with something. Just gotta give it Vigilance, right? That's something that you can throw in the deck, because this is gonna be a little bit of a Voltron deck anyway, and I just really like this idea of, if you have fewer cards than three in your hand, because of course that means you want to have less cards in your hand, that is a really interesting build around. You could do a discard theme, which is sort of what I suggested. Mind over matter, of course, which is a fantastic fit in this deck is a great discard option. So I can discard a bunch of cards to untap and tap stuff. Of course, I can untap my commander if it's attacking. So now that Ward 4 is turned on. And then when my commander connects, I get to draw three cards. That's fantastic, right? Of course, it's got flying, so getting in for damage isn't hard. I think this is a pretty interesting build around. I'm surprised it is super unpopular. Coming in at number nine, Pelucranos Unchained. Two black and a green zombie Hydra OO. Enters the battlefield with six plus one plus one counters on it. It escapes with 12 plus one plus one counters on it. If damage would be dealt to Pelucranos while it has plus one plus one counters on it, prevent that damage and remove that many counters from it. One black and a green. Pelucranos fights another target creature and has escape for black and a green. Exile six other cards from your graveyard. So there is so much going on on this card. Just an absolute ton of stuff that you can build around. It's in Golgari colors, which is a really great color combination, really popular one. This currently only has 217 decks on EDH Rec, again, which is pretty much nothing. First of all, it's a zombie Hydra. So you can do any Hydra or zombie tribal stuff with this commander, which I think is super super interesting. You can throw a little bit of that in there. You're in the plus one plus one counter theme, which of course there is a ton there. And again, this commander has been around for a while. So since it's come out, you might want to look back, right? We've had a lot of great support for counter themes and stuff like that. That could be a great include in this build. You have the escaping, which is really interesting. It's always great to have something that sort of gets around commander tax, right? So I can have my commander die over and over again, let it go to the graveyard, and I have a way to sort of cheat it back into play. After your commander has died once, it's already worth it to do the escape because, of course, if you recast it from the command zone, it's already going to cost six, right? And then you have the fighting as well, and there's a lot you can do with the fighting. Of course, you're killing your opponent's creatures, which is fantastic. I just think there's a ton of interesting interesting things you can do with this deck. 
Surprised it's that unpopular. Coming in at number eight, Tigum Sidisi's Hand. Three blue and a black, human wizard, three, four. Skip your draw step. That doesn't sound very good. However, at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Pay a black and tap. Exile X cards from your graveyard. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. I think this is a fantastic commander. This is one that when it came out was really popular for a little while and then sort of fell off. It's only got 211 decks on EDA rec right now haven't seen this guy in forever i actually used him in a janky dex build that i did recently where i was doing a lot of graveyard manipulation stuff so you can check that out if you're looking for an interesting build with this guy skipping your draw step sucks obviously but it's being replaced and one of the interesting things about skipping your own draw step is you can actually use that as an advantage to yourself right first of all there are cards like necropotents for example that are also skipping your draw step so if you're skipping your draw step with another card the overlap doesn't do anything right the redundancy doesn't hurt you so you can put a whole bunch of things in the deck that are skipping your draw step as well and then giving you a bunch of advantage also at the beginning of your up creep you get to look at the top three cards and you can use that as an advantage say putting a paradox haze in there so now i get two upkeeps so twice i get to look at the top three cards put one in my hand and the rest in my graveyard looking at the top three cards of your library is way better than just drawing a card off the top you obviously get to pick the one you want and obviously you get to pick the ones you want in your graveyard which is how you're probably going to end up building this deck furthermore anything that says you can't draw cards this also gets around i just talked about this in my rules video looking at the top cards of your library and putting one in your hand is not actually drawing so if you have cards in your deck that say you can't draw cards or nobody can draw cards that'll hurt your opponents and isn't going to hurt you at all choosing things to put in your graveyard is fantastic right so i'm not even getting to that last ability to me that's just an added bonus i exile cards from my graveyard to kill creatures you're going to be filling your graveyard it's nice to have that staple on your commander but just that first part there's just so much that you can build around there i think that's a fantastic ability and this is a pretty good commander i can't believe it's this unpopular coming in at number seven sidisi undead vizier three black black zombie naga four six has death touch and has exploit which of course means when this creature enters the battlefield you may sacrifice a creature when sidisi undead vizier exploits a creature you may search your library for a card and put it in your hand then shuffle so of course this is a popular card in the format it's used in a lot of decks it's a tutor on a stick which which is great fits in a lot of sacrifice themes because you want to be doing that anyway of course the important thing about exploit is the creature can exploit itself right i can cast my cdc sacrifice it to itself to go get a card this currently has only 365 decks on edh rack which is pretty surprising because i think this is a really powerful commander now i will say it is a little boring although there's a lot of commanders out there that i find really really boring but they're powerful so they're popular way more popular than cdc I added this to the list because I used to play against a guy who had a Sidisi deck all the time and I was like man this thing is tough to play against because Sidisi can exploit herself what you can do is cast your commander the first time exploit it sacrifices to itself and you just let it go to the graveyard and you get to go tutor for of course any recursion option to get your commander out of the graveyard most importantly a repeatable one and this guy would always go get dawn of the dead which is an absolute auto include in this deck so you go tutor for your dawn of the dead you put that into play and then on your upkeep your sadisi comes back out of the graveyard and exploits itself again you go get the tutor for something else and you just rinse and repeat if you have a repeatable recursion option you can just continually let your sadisi go to the graveyard again maybe that doesn't sound exciting for a lot of people but what this does is allow you to tutor every turn and do any other strategy you want to right so if you're in any strategy that is in mono black you can do it with sadisi as a commander so for example another janky deck idea i came up with which is sort of the assemble idea like the vecna series for example right that is a mono black assemble thing that you can put in your sadisi deck and very easily go tutor for all the pieces that you need and assemble that so it's not like i'm just going to tutor for some combo and win you can do a more interesting janky theme with this 
this as well. So maybe give it a consideration if you're looking for that kind of theme. Coming in at number six, General Kudro of Dranith. One white and a black human soldier, three, three. Other humans you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever General Kudro of Dranith or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. Pay two mana, sacrifice two humans, destroy target creature with power four or greater. I really love this guy when I first saw him. He's sort of like a Swiss army knife on a commander, which I love. I mean, he's giving that anthem to your creatures, which is okay. You know, again, it's a little boring just to give an anthem to your tribe but doing so much more as well. I mean, Graveyard Hate stapled on your commander. You have Creature Removal stapled on your commander. I just love the sort of Swiss Army Knife feel that this guy has. And the reason I added this guy to the list is because I just did my Midnight Hunt retrospective and talked about how much people really love tribal commanders. And this is a super unpopular one. Only 331 decks on EDH Rec. And again, Human is a very popular tribe. It's the most popular tribe in the entire game. I mean, the examples I gave in that video, Katilda, Dawn, Heart, Prime, and Sigarda, Champion of Light, both human tribal commanders. Katilda has 1,600 decks on EDH Rec, and Sigarda has 780, both of them way more popular than General Kudro. Now, maybe it's because they're in white and green. I don't know. I think black and white are fantastic colors for human tribal. You can even just do an aristocrats theme here because, of course, black and white does aristocrats well your commander is sacrificing creatures there's lots of other great humans that will fit in this theme as well so i'm looking at this and i'm just thinking okay there's all these other tribal human commanders that i think are less interesting is it the color combination i don't know i think this is a really interesting unique commander that solves a lot of problems for you in a commander game and is a pretty fantastic build around it's giving you three advantages to playing in that tribe and of course humans are an incredibly popular tribe i don't get why this guy so unpopular. Coming in at number five, Zerlin of the Claw, three red, red. Vyashino Shaman, three, four. Pay one red, red, tap, search your library for a dragon, permanent card, put that card into the battlefield, then shuffle. That dragon gains haste until end of turn, exile at the beginning of the next end step. So I have talked about this one before. I sort of gave it an honorable mention in my original unpopular video, and I have done it on my Underwhelming Commander series. And again, this is one where I'm like, I really probably shouldn't be doing this on my Underwhelming Commander series. Maybe I should change it to Unpopular Commander series. This only has 360 decks on EDH Rec. Again, that's almost nothing. This is a fantastic ability. I, I get that you're in mono red dragons here, but so what? Three mana to get any dragon out of your library and put it directly into play? There's a lot of really important wording here that you can get around. So for example, exile at the beginning of your next end step, which means if you can sacrifice that dragon before your end step, then you don't have to worry about losing it. If you have, say, a Sundial of the Infinite, you can just do the time stop effect and you won't be exiling that card at all. It just stays on the battlefield. If you have a Conjurer's Closet, both of those triggers will go on the stack at the same time and you will blink your dragon before it gets exiled by your commander. And again, you will get to keep it. There's a lot of really interesting things you can do here, but I just really love the idea of I'm just chucking giant dragons at my opponents. Pretty great commander. And again, it's the tribal theme. Everyone loves dragons. Really surprised how unpopular this guy is. Coming in at number four, Lizolda the Blood Witch. One, black and a red human cleric, three, one. Pay two and sacrifice a creature. Lizolda the Blood Witch deals two damage to any target. If the sacrificed creature was red, draw a card if the sacrificed creature was black. So the wording there can be a little confusing. I don't know if maybe that plays into the part of this not being a very popular commander. It does have only 251 decks on EDH Rec. So what this ability is doing is if the creature is red, it's going to do two damage to any target. If the creature was black, you get to draw a card. If the creature was, of course, black and red, you get to do both. And that's what I think makes for a really interesting build around here is, yes, I'm in a sacrifice theme, but I'm also sort of in a multicolored theme because you want as many Rakdos creatures in this deck as you can. Because every time you sacrifice them, of course, you're going to get both of these off of it. Can be a token as well, right? So if I have something that is creating tokens, that 
that are black and red. Every time I sacrifice them, I will get to do the damage and I will get to draw a card. Lazolda can even sacrifice herself, right? She is a black and red card, so you can pay two mana, sacrifice your commander, throw two damage around and draw a card. It is a aristocrats theme in black and red. There's a ton you can do there. There is so much support recently for a sacrifice theme in Rakdos colors. Maybe you should be revisiting this commander, right? It's an old one for sure. This really is a fantastic build around throwing damage around and drawing cards is always good, right? Of course, I can throw a Basilisk color type of effect on my Lozolda as well. So all the damage I will be dealing will be just straight up killing those creatures. There's a ton you can do here. I think this is a super interesting commander. People really need to go after it. Coming in at number three, Maloku the Clouded Mirror. Four in a blue, Moonfolk Wizard 2-4 with flying. Pay one, return a land you control to its owner's hand, create a 1-1 blue illusion creature token with flying. Man, this card was just a powerhouse back in the day. It was absolutely feared. It was a really great win con in a lot of different decks where you sort of just pick up all your lands on your opponent's end step and create this army of flying illusions. It's a really neat commander for a few reasons. One, that is a fantastic ability. Also though, you're in the token theme. You're in Illusion Tribal where there is a little bit of support there. You're in Flying Tribal, so you can do that as well. You can also do the Moonfolk Tribal thing here as well, right? Of course, all the other Moonfolk are doing a similar effect of picking up the Lance thing. And for me, again, I think that makes for an interesting build around because now you're in a mono blue Lance theme, which is pretty unique. I know there's not a ton of support there for doing Lands in mono blue, but there's so many interesting things you can do with this commander, and there's only 107 decks currently on EDH Rec. That's, again, almost nothing, right? Such a unique, interesting commander with such a fantastic ability. It's kind of sad, actually, for me because this was a powerhouse back in the day, how unpopular this commander is. I'd actually really like to see it more. Coming in at number two, Temet Vizier of Nactamun. White and a blue, human cleric 2-2. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature token you control gets plus one, plus one until end turn and can't be blocked and has embalm three white and a blue. Now, this is another commander that when it first came out was really popular. Again, this was around the time I first started playing commander. I saw this guy a lot. I ended up making a deck with this guy because I thought it had a really interesting ability. What I ended up doing is the create token copy thing. So it was a bit of a blink deck where I'd have something like a cloud blazer. I would cackling counterpart, make a copy of my cloud blazer, get the card draw and the life gain. And now I have a token creature in play that I can use my commander's ability on. So I did a lot of that. However, there's a bunch of different ways you can go with this because again, it's a very open-ended commander. Any token creature works here, right? So I can make a giant token creature, get in for damage with it, maybe with a Phyrexian Rebirth, a fantastic fit in a Temet deck. A lot of cards that came out after the fact that have come out in recent years, again, are probably great fits here. Might want to revisit this one because of all the stuff we've had recently. But for me, again, what makes this commander particularly good is it cheats that commander tax. Now, this sort of cheats commander tax in a different way. Because it has Embalm, of course, you can exile this card from your graveyard and create a token copy of it, except it's a zombie human cleric. And of course, because I've played this commander, I'm very familiar with this scenario. So I cast my commander for two mana, it dies. I send it back to the command zone. I don't want to send it to the graveyard yet because the Embalm costs five and recasting my commander only costs four. So the second time my commander dies, now I'm going to send it to the graveyard. And when I do, of course, I can embalm it for five. So five is going to be cheaper than recasting my commander. When I embalm it, it's going to get exiled from the graveyard. Then I'm going to put it back in the command zone, but I have the token copy. So I don't need the one in the command zone. I can just leave my commander in the command zone and I have the token copy on the battlefield. When that token copy dies, if my commander dies for the third time, now I can recast it from the command zone and then repeat the process. It's a pretty interesting way to go about it. Also, because your commander is a token, when you embalm it, obviously you can use the ability on itself. So you can even do a little bit of a Voltron deck here, which would be really interesting. Only has 371 decks on EDH Rec right now. Really shocking. Again, this is a commander that was super popular for a while. One of the most popular Azorius commanders in the format and has completely fallen off. Haven't seen a Temet deck in forever. But coming in at number one is Mazzy True Sword 
Paladin. One red, green, and a white halfling knight, three, four. Whenever an enchanted creature attacks one of your opponents, it gets plus two, plus zero, oh, and gains trample until end of turn. Whenever an aura you control is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, exile it until the end of your next turn. You may cast that card. So a lot of people are going to think it's weird that I have this at number one for a couple of reasons. First of all, it does have 696 decks on EDH rec. That's pretty good. It's a lot more than any of the other commanders on this list. Secondly, it just came out, right? This came out in Baldur's Gate. It hasn't been around that long. Give it time to breathe, right? Demo. Let's see how popular this commander becomes. But I put it on the list for a couple of reasons. First of all, no matter how popular a commander is, you can always kind of tell compared to the other commanders from the set, how popular it will be in the long run. So again, if I'm just looking at Baldur's Gate, Miram Sentinel Worm is the most popular commander from that set, has over 7,000 decks on EDH Rec already. Mazzy only has 696, so more than 10 times the amount. Now, of course, that might be a little extreme. Captain Nagathrad is number two, has over 3,600 decks on EDH Rec. Again, way more popular. In fact, from Baldur's Gate, Mazzy is the 24th most popular commander from that set. So again, if I'm just looking at Baldur's Gate, it's way less popular than I thought it would be. This was very high on my best commanders from Baldur's Gate list because I thought it was a fantastic commander. And I think it's even more fantastic after doing a deck doctor for one of my patrons on my Patreon. They had a Mazzy deck. I took a look at it. And as I was coming up with ideas, because that's what I do in my deck doctor videos is I just sit there and I sort of brew in my head. And as I come up with ideas, I come up with more ideas and hey, maybe I'll work with this and hey, maybe I'll work with that. There is so much you can do with this commander. So first of all, this is a great build around just because it gets around the downside of auras, right? When I put an aura on my creature and that creature dies, it's bad value because it's a two for one, right? My opponent kills my creature, my aura and my creature both go to the graveyard. I've lost a lot of value there. It's a two for one for my opponent. Mazzy gets around that really big downside, which I love. There's a lot more you can do with this commander though, which is why I find it so interesting. So first of all, this is whenever an enchanted creature attacks, it doesn't have to be yours. So I can put that aura on my opponent's creature and when they attack, it's gonna get plus two, plus O oh, and trample. So you can do a little of a politics theme here. You can do a goading theme. I can put those goad enchantments on my opponent's creatures, which of course are gonna be good anyway. It's gonna force my opponent's creatures to attack. I will get a benefit. My opponent's creature again will get the plus two two plus O and trample as well. So you could go that theme here. You could do a similar theme to what a Tiana is doing where I have these auras that are sacrificing themselves, right? So a Capuchin Standard, for example, I can throw that in the deck. I can pay two mana sacrifice to the draw card. It will go into exile and then I can recast it the next turn. So getting some card advantage there. Squeeze Embrace, again, another card that I would auto include in a Tiana deck. I would also include here, Fantastic Fit. I can put it on my commander. My commander gets that's plus two, plus two. So it's going to be a five, six. And when it attacks, it's going to be a seven, six trample. That seems pretty good. But also when enchanted creature dies, return that card to owner's hand. So if there's a board wipe, for example, these guys see each other go to the graveyard. My squeeze embrace will go into exile and my Mazzy will return to my hand. So on my turn, I can replay my Mazzy and then replay my squeeze embrace from exile onto my commander. Fantastic fit there. But what makes this commander even more interesting than I originally thought is these do not have to be enchant creature auras, guys, okay? Whenever an aura you control is put into a graveyard means you can do any kind of aura. So I have an aura on my land, for example, right? I have a wild growth effect. If I lose it, that's an aura going to the graveyard and I can exile it and then recast it on my turn. Again, I can be sacrificing those enchantments to do stuff. Faith Healer is an absolute auto include in this deck because now I can be sacrificing all of my enchantments to gain a bunch of life. And then of course, they're gonna get exiled and I can recast cast them on my turn. Curses also work here, which is a really funny way to build this deck. I guess you would probably ignore that first ability. The downside of a curse is I put a curse on my opponent. When that opponent dies, all of the curses attached to that player get destroyed and they go to the graveyard and then they're sort of gone. But in this case, all of those auras that I have attached to that player when they die will get exiled and now I can recast them, attach them to a different player. So another really funny, interesting way you can go with this, you can do some research and find out what are the auras that aren't actually enchant creatures. There's a lot here and your commander works with any 
Annie Aura. Really, really fantastic commander. Again, it's kind of popular, I guess, and it is a recent commander, so it will gain more popularity, but I just had to add it on this list because, again, if I'm just looking at the Baldur's Gate commanders, it is way down there, and I think it is an absolutely fantastic commander. Great build around the lot you can do with it, but that is it. That is all 10 commanders that I'm really surprised how unpopular they are, and maybe this video will entice you to run out and build around them. I like to throw out these ideas to give a little bit more love to some of these commanders that we never see in the format, because I always like to see a variety of them when I sit down at a commander game. Let me know in the comments below if there's any commanders that you are shocked at how unpopular they are, but that is it for today, and thanks for tuning in.